same forces that created this planet over the last four and a half billion years still at work today? Are they perhaps still driving, moving and changing the planet we live on? Though we may not always see or feel these changes... I do. Atlas? Yo! What's the matter? You seem a bit shaky. Hey, you think it's easy carrying the weight of the world around on your shoulders? <laughs> But you'll be doing it for so long, I, I think by now you'll be used to it. Hey, like you said, this place has been going through a lot of changes. Well, perhaps I was being overly dramatic. Hey, no way, the world's full of drama. Yes, but things basically remain the same, don't they? I can see I'm going to have to take a few moments out of eternity here to explain some of this to you. I hardly think... Yeah, that's obvious. Now, see here, my good man, I know the Earth rotates, I know the seasons change. Yeah, but do you know why they change? Or what changes take place because the Earth rotates? Well, whether or not... Weather. I... Yeah, that's a good place to start. That'll give us the proper atmosphere for learning. I say, what on Earth is that? Actually, it's on and over the Earth. It's a cycle, a hydrologic cycle. And what does it cycle? Water, and lots of it. From the ocean, to the air, and then back to the ocean again. In fact, there's ten times more water up here than all the rivers on Earth combined. Impressive. Wait, you want to talk impressive? You're talking about the ocean. Averaging 12,000 feet of water over two-thirds of a whole planet. What effect does all that water have on the weather? Are you kidding? It controls it, but with a little help from the wind. But it all works together. It's a system. You see, winds here push surface currents in the ocean. But the currents are bent. Hey, that's because the Earth rotates. Now pay attention. Anyway, these bent currents bring warm water from the equator to the poles, and cold water from the poles to the equator. How and where they flow determines the weather pattern or climate in a given area. Sort of like a global thermostat. Absolutely! That's swell. Now, these are swells, waves pushed by the wind across thousands of miles of open ocean. Then, when they reach the shoreline, boom! Shuts up! What about the big ones? You know, the tidal waves. Oh, a sudden shift in the seafloor, like an earthquake, it sends a powerful underwater wave across the ocean at about 450 miles per hour. When it nears the shallow water, with all that energy, it has nowhere to go but up! And what goes up? You're very astute. <laughs> there certainly are a lot of changes in the ocean. Right? I mean, things are always on the move. Yeah, you haven't seen anything yet. Whatever are you doing? I'm going to take you with us real action is. Oh, come, come, Atlas. What could possibly be so intriguing about the bottom of the ocean? See for yourself. Oh, a few hills here and there. Hills? You need to get a new perspective on things. We're talking mountains and ridges and ditches. Uh, I believe those are trenches, Atlas. Yeah, trenches, like I said. Just look at all that flat land. The abyssal plains, deserts of the ocean floor, 50 times larger in total area than the Sahara. Very chic. <laughs> I must admit, Atlas, you show me an ocean floor I wouldn't have dreamed of in a million years. Probably a lot longer than that. I beg your pardon. Look, <clears throat> it's taken 200 million years just to make some of that floor. That's a very long time. Nah, in the life of a planet, it's a drop in a bucket. Oh, you really should be more careful, you know. You could crack something. Look, see, what did I tell you? All the land dropped to one side and cracked into a dozen pieces. Now what will happen? Relax. This has already happened. You've lost me. Yeah, I'd like to. Look. This is Pangaea, a supercontinent that was here about 200 million years ago. Eventually, cracks in the Earth's crust began splitting it apart. Cracks in the Earth's crust that moved continents? That hardly seems logical. It's actually very geological. But cracks don't move continents. Plates do. The cracks you see are actually the edges of crustal plates. 
edges of cracked plates. That seems rather rough. Hey, those are the breaks. <clears throat> Let's look at the layer of molten rock beneath the Earth's crust. Hot idea. Now, picture the Earth's crust broken into several big pieces. But like giant rafts, they sort of float around on this molten rock. And the continents ride on top of the rocks. Right. Now, when two plates pull apart, the lava squirts up through the cracks and cools, building new ocean floors. Consequently, the Atlantic's been growing by almost an inch every year. I dare say Columbus would have a bit farther to go, wouldn't he? Eh? <laughs> yeah, about 30 feet. And what happens when the plates collide? Well, when they meet head on, the edge of one slips down beneath the other, forming a deep trench and pushing up mountains as it goes. Ooh. How very continental. But sometimes two plates will hook up in a different way. How's that? As one tries to slide past the other, it gets hung up. Or sounds harmless enough. Hey, don't kid yourself. When pressure builds up and it lets go, the result is earth shaking. Good grief. It's like a moving jigsaw puzzle the world over. Continuously. How long will this sort of thing go on? <laughs> if you stick around another hundred million years. Yeah, I'd love to, but I'm afraid I really don't have the time. <laughs> it's no fault of mine. <laughs> Well, you've been most informative, Atlas, and if there's anything I can do for you... Yeah, if you could get me a good heating pad, this Antarctic ice really gives me a cold shoulder. <laughs> now, now, let's see, where was I? <laughs> oh, yes, the same forces that have created this planet over the last four and a half billion years are still at work today. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>